Hey, I'm so glad you guys are here on Labor Day weekend, and we're about to get crazy this morning. Yeah. Uh, about a week, a couple weeks ago, my, my wife and my daughter decided to go on a trip uh, on the way to visit my son in Texas. My son's a, a youth pastor in Texas, um, which they planted a church like not even that long ago, and their youth ministry just had 170 kids in it. That's insane. And so um, he's having a blast. But my wife went to go visit uh, this, this church. And, um, and, uh, and on the way there, my daughter uh, called and said, Dad, can you make sure that you feed my fish? Okay. This fish is not friendly to other fish, so you can't put another fish in there. It's, it just kind of swims around. Uh, and this fish represents a relationship with this boy because this boy bought this fish. He's a God-loving boy, fearing boy, all right? He's a great kid. I love this kid. But this fish represents their relationship. And, and so keeping this fish alive is like keeping this relationship alive. So this is a real important thing, kind of a girl thing. Uh, and so she says, feed my fish. Well, I went in and I grabbed a whole bunch of food and dumped it in there. <laughs> Because that's what got, you know, the fish might have been hungry. I, I, gave, them, I gave them a smorgasbord. And, uh, um, and I didn't think about it. A week later, my daughter goes, on their way home, they go, hey, did you feed my fish? I, I said, I fed them really well. <laughs> how many times? Just once. Dad, how much did you give them? I said, I gave them enough to, to the last, you know, and she says, you can kill them by feeding them too much. And I went, oh no. She said, dad, go look, is he dead? And I thought, oh no, oh no. So I go into the tank, I can't find her fish. And I'm thinking, it jumped out, like where, how does it not in the tank? And so I, I kind of started to giggle a little bit. She's like, Dad, it's not funny. This is serious. This, this fish represents my relationship. I'm supposed to keep this thing alive. And uh, so as I'm talking to her, I notice there's a little house in her little tank. And so I pick up the house, and there's no fish under it. And I turn it upside down, and the fish is stuck to the top of the, of the house. Like, he's been gone for a while. Let's just say I might have fed him to death. And I realized that when I fed him so much, he swam into his little house and died. And uh, I started laughing. And I started laughing because one, it was really awkward. And, and it was just the most awkward, it was just, I just started laughing. I mean, I'm just giggling. I'm just like, this fish is stuck. And Kamaya's like, is it dead? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm looking at it as it's like falling apart. and. And so I kind of walked over, I'm like, come on, I don't know. And I'm thinking, like, I could buy her a fish sticking in. She won't even know. And, and, uh, and so I go to the, the toilet, and, and we're talking, and I put it in the toilet, and then I flush it. And she goes, did you just flush my fish? And she's, like, freaking out. And I just couldn't stop laughing. I mean, I'm just, like, trying not to laugh, but I'm just like, come on, it's, it's, your fish is fine. And she's just, she just, and then Jess gets involved. And she goes, she, she, just, she just lets me have it. I mean, lets me have it. And then they hang up on me. Okay, now we got a whole nother scenario here. You're coming home. We're, this is supposed to be a peaceful return, you know? It's not, you're coming home, and I'm like, maybe you should stay for another week, you know? Uh, and, and so she's coming home. And, and, and they won't answer my phone calls. So I finally call Kamaya, and Kamaya goes, Dad, Dad, just, just let it be. And I'm like, and, and finally I get a text from my wife, and I'll, I'll fluff it up. She says, I'm not fluffing it up, but I'm promising you I'm fluffing, fluffing it up. And she said, you are being such a jerk. That's actually not what she said. She said, you are a jerk. <laughs> There's a difference between are and being, all right? Maybe she meant to write being, but she wrote you are, which means I am forever a jerk. No. I read this thing, and I'm like, call her, and she won't answer. And I call her, and she won't answer. Finally, she's answered, said, I'm, I just don't want to talk to you, and whatever. And so this is where we are at. And 
I realized that I've been having these conversations with so many different couples in the church. And my conversation is, it doesn't matter about your husband or, or whatever. I know they've messed up. I know they've done stuff. But guess what? It's how you respond to what God's asked you to do towards them, towards your kids, towards the people in your life. Because if you, if you respond, then you're being who God's called you to be. But if you react, well, I'm going to play the song that we're going to do. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Did you get that? If I respond to God's word, if I respond to who God's called me to be, no problem. But if I react, it's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. I don't want you to forget this because this song is going to come up. It's one simple thing that makes us an anti-hero. This song is called Anti-Hero. And it's, it's reacting. We're in a culture of reacting. Just turn on Facebook. I'm, people keep coming up to me and going, I saw this on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, turn it off. And they're just reacting to everything and reacting to problems and reacting to feelings. And, and, uh, and that makes us an anti-hero. It makes us the opposite of a hero. It just, just makes us... But when we respond, we can be a hero. Yeah. We can be who God's called us to be. Reaction is my way. It usually is about my feelings. It's about winning. It's that argument. It's, I put unbridled passion. It's when someone meets you with so much passion, you're like, calm down a little bit. Another Taylor Swift song. <laughs> you just need to calm down, all right? But responding is softening my heart to what God's asking me to do. And regardless of my feelings and emotions or what I want to do, I turn to God and say, God, what do you want me to do? And God says, you're not going to like this, but this is what I'm asking you to do. And when you do it, 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 it changes your life. Here's, here's what it says about love. The Bible says that love is patient and love is kind. It's gentle, it has self-control, it sees the best, it's not rude, it, it, it speaks life, it lifts up, not tears down, it doesn't tear down. And this is what I've been finding in my moments in life, is that I am fighting to react in every scenario. I'm out golfing and this guy's beating me. In my mind, I'm thinking, forget the ball, I'll hit you with the clubs. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm being vulnerable, all right? But I'm, in my mind, I'm going, forget golf. I'm not going to do that. But you know what God's saying? Cheer him on. He's playing great. Way to go. I wonder how often in our lives, our, respond, our, our, our reactions are creating so many storms around us. If you're a person in here today and you have no peace in your life, you are a reactor. If every, every conversation you have is about all the people in your life and how screwed up they are and how many storms there are, it's me. Hi. just start singing I'm this song. The problem, it's me. Just start singing this song. There's this guy in the Bible that just instantly came to my mind when I was thinking about this Taylor Swift song. And, and his name is, is Jonah. And what I love about Jonah is he writes his own story. And when he writes his story, he doesn't tell you how great of a person he is. He writes this story about his reaction to what God asks him to do. So today, I want to pray for you. And maybe, maybe today, maybe today you can see clearly what God wants you to do how he's asking you to respond. And maybe you can see situations in your life where you're fighting just like I am. And, and it, the older you get, the harder it is not to react. Turn to someone that's older and say, I told you. I told you. It's me. Hi. <laughs> no, I'm the problem is me. I want to pray. Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you for this service. I thank you for Labor Day, God. As we open your word, as we go into this, Lord, I just pray people hear your voice. They, they hear your calling. 
And Lord, they follow you. And Lord, we want to rid our lives of the enemy's plans and schemes to keep us in chaos, to keep us in disorder. But God, as people look into the churches in America and the world, they should see something different. They should see something that's not like the world. So help us to respond to you, God. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. And even though someone last night told me not to pray for them, I'm praying for the Seahawks to win the Super Bowl because the Bible says to pray about everything. So I'm just going to pray about everything, God, and the Mariners. And God, we just lift up this great state. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. Um, Jonah 1 starts off and says this. It says this. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need to wake up. This word get up is actually on my arm. It looks like dip, unfortunately. It, 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 it's awakened. It's kum. It means get up. It's the same thing God said to all these different prophets. He said, get up. It's time to go. I want to speak this to you today. Hey, guys, it's time to go. God's calling everybody in this room to wake up. It's this hour right now that we need to serve God. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. And isn't it funny that God calls Nineveh a great city? Because Nineveh is like Sodom and Gomorrah. This is just like God. He looks at you and go, man, you're a great warrior. But, in, but he knows your entire life. He's calling you to something that he sees, not, not something that you are. He's calling you to something you can be. And he's calling the city. He says, announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. I don't want to say to everybody in the room, we have a calling. We all have a God call on our life to, res to respond to. Everybody has people in your life. Everybody has a scenario in your life. Everybody has something going on where God is speaking to you and you're wrestling with the idea of am I going to respond to God or am I going to keep living in a life of reaction? This is where Jonah's at. He has an awakening moment. Hey, get up and let's go to this great city of Nineveh that's living terribly. <laughs> I'm calling you. But Jonah got up and went to the opposite in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord, which Taylor Swift would say, "It's me." Hi. Um, the problem is me. If you're going the opposite direction, who's the problem? Yeah, you look at God like, I don't know how this does happen to me, God. Like, you're going the opposite direction. You're going the opposite direction. And he went down to the port of Joppa, which is Tel Aviv today, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He, brought, he bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Uh, Anybody been able to escape God? No. <laughs> Go try. Just like, he can't see me. I'm going to. But isn't this what we do when we react? We, we, we think that ah, he's not going to know. He's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's whatever. Here's the thing. I'm a problem when I head the opposite way God is calling me. If you're here today and God has called you to something and you're on the opposite direction, welcome to It's me. Say it to yourself. Um, the problem is me. Who's the problem? You're headed in the wrong direction of God. God has a call on your life. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Ephesians 2:10 says you're a masterpiece made to do the things God planned for you, but when you're headed in the wrong direction, you got a problem. This is, this is the hard thing with love. Love is just so hard. It's so tough. Your love and the things that God's called you to are way harder than maybe we even say they are. 
It's hard to love your wife the way God asks you to love your wife or your husband. It's hard to love your kids when they do everything wrong and you have the power to to let them have it. It's hard to love them the way that God asks us. Jonah goes on and says this, but the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea. Who hurled the powerful wind over the sea? The The Lord. Did you catch this? Are some people in storms because God loves them enough to shake them up a little bit? How many people come and they're like, I'm in a storm, and you're like, thank God, it's about time you wake up. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah, you can get, but all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted, get up and pray to your God. May he, uh, uh, maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Here's the, here's the thing. I'm a problem when I am living in sin because sin wipes me out. Sin takes so much energy. Have you ever tried to do something really bad? I mean, as you're trying to do it, you're thinking about it, you're scheming it, and you're thinking, I can't let anybody know. And then you have to have all these different stories and this whole different thing, and pretty soon you look at yourself and go, I don't even know who you are. And and, and all of this stuff happens, and it just starts to wear you out. Why is Jonah sleeping in the bottom of the boat? Because sin knocked him down. Fear and worry and regret, and all of these things. But doing the right thing is the opposite. Doing the right thing brings energy, but it doesn't bring energy right now. Doing the right thing takes a little bit of energy to fight the reaction that you want to have the response that God's asking you. It takes a little bit of energy to go, God, I'm going to push myself aside because I gave you my life. I'm going to do the right thing. If you're here today and and, and your whole life is about planning or scheming evil, if if your life is locked in pornography and you're sitting there going, I'm going to type these things in and this is, I'm, I'm trying, I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm saying it's all in secret. It's all in a way where if people knew it would destroy you. So you have to spend all of this energy and time. If your life is selfish, if your life, just, just fill in the blank. So sin wipes us out. But Jonah goes on and says, he goes on and says this. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. I love that Jonah's there, he's awake, and they're like, why do we why are we in this storm? There must be a person. There must be a reason. These guys that aren't even believers in our God are believing it's a spiritual storm. And so, so when they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. And wh- why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? Who are you? You can go. <laughs> Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I'm Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Here's the problem. The problem is that I believe in a God that created everything. Does anybody believe in a God that created the heavens and the earth? Anybody in the room? Now, there are people in the room that might struggle with believing that God created the heavens and the earth. And... and, and, but, but those of us that do, here's the real issue, yet I go the opposite direction. I believe in the God that created everything, but when he asked me to go this way, I go the other way, which we should say. It's me, I, I'm the problem, it's me. Was 
the problem when we go the wrong direction. We, we believe that God created the heavens and the earth, but then when he actually asks you to have faith, you go, I don't know. I don't know. I was sitting outside in the hot tub, and this happens regularly, where I'm just sitting there, and, and the moon was out, and it was so beautiful, and, and I would just, as I read this scripture, I was thinking of how much I believe that God created everything. I, everything I'm looking at is perfect. And I'm sitting in a hot tub that I, I didn't even buy, God gave me. And, and I'm sitting in this life that God has given me. And I realize how much God has created everything in my life that's good. Every good and perfect gift that I have comes from God. How, how do you respond to this question if it was you? A lot of people in our culture are asked this question right now. They ask, who are you? And what would your response be? Uh, we got a lot of people in our culture that would say, uh, they would identify themselves as their sexuality, which is concerning to me. I'm straight. No? How are we going to respond? Here's who, who, uh, who are you? I'm a child of God. I was adopted into the family. <laughs> who, who are you? I'm a believer. My whole life is his. Like, this is who I am. I'm a follower of Jesus, the guy that died for my sins. I love this question. And Jonah gets it right. And so many of us might be able to get this right if someone asked you, but he gets the part of faith wrong. I believe in God, and I know who my identity is, but I'm not going to go where God asked me to go. Because what am I doing? I'm reacting. I'm reacting, not responding to the thing that God put in my heart. And Jonah goes on, and there it says in Jonah, it says, the sailors were terrified when they heard this, for they had already told, or for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? I love that lost people are asking a guy that's not lost, why did you go away from God? <laughs> it's just like when people come to me and say, um, I just don't, I, I, I believe in, in evolution or I believe in some of this stuff and they start going through all this. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're religious. And they're like, well, what do you believe? I'm like, I'm not religious. I believe in a relationship with God. But, but so often like there's these people that are saying things to us all around you. God can use anything to speak to us. But have they grown? And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? <laughs> throw me in the sea. <laughs> or maybe he just said, throw me in the sea. <laughs> Your passion is killing us. <laughs> Jonah said, and it will become calm again. And I know that this terrible storm. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's, it's me. me. It's me. I'm the problem. When my, react my reactions create storms. My reactions create storms all around. I want to tell a story of a guy in our church who was living a life of reactions. He, he, I actually asked his permission to share this story, and it's such a cool story. He, he came to me and he said, Daniel, I have an a, a ex, and my ex has the kids, and we split the time with the kids, and, 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 and when I go to get the kids, my ex's boyfriend's there, and I hate this guy. He's a jerk, and I, I, I want to punch him in the face, and, I, and, and I've even got up in his face a few times, and he's like, Daniel, what do I do? And I said, this, is, this really sucks for me to tell you what to do, but, but I, I want you to think differently, because I'm guessing your entire life, you've lived reacting. But, but now you're a new person. You're not the same. You're God's. And so, so how would God want you to see this problem? Here's what I think. I think what God wants you to do is see that this guy is with your kids when you're not with them. And, and, and whether you like it or not, you need to do something to say to this guy, hey, thank you for being, you know, hey, you're here. You're in their life. 
And, and, and so I'm just going to try to find a way to bless you. So I said, I know this is not how you're thinking, but, but what if you were to stop trying to beat up the guy and, and, and throw out a little, hey, I want to ask forgiveness for the way I've been acting, and I want you to know that I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for you bringing my kids to me, and, and I just want to bless you. I said, go get them a gift or something. And so he did what I would never have done. He wanted to buy a knife. He'd been thinking about buying his own knife. I wouldn't give a knife to my ex's boyfriend, but he's different, all right? He wanted to buy this Kershaw knife for himself, and he realized instead of buying it for myself, I'm going to buy it for this guy. And when, when my kids go to show up, I'm going to give it to him and say, hey, I'm sorry. I want you to know I'm praying for you, and, and, and I just thank you for bringing these kids to me. This is a blessing. And, and so the guy didn't show up because he kind of created some conflict, but his ex showed up. So finally, he just gave the knife to the ex and said, hey, would you give this to him? I've been thinking about him. Would, I just, and would you tell him that I want to ask his forgiveness and, uh, and, and that I'm just thankful? And so she gives the, the guy the knife, and, the guy, and, and, and he goes to get his daughters, and, and, uh, and the ex comes and says, hey, it really was awesome. Like he said, thank you, and that he forgives you. And, and, and by the way, uh, if you want to take the kids, the girls, for a week, hey, just take them. We're, we're just, you know. And he came back, he calls me, and he's like, Daniel, everything's been a fight. Everything's been awful. But, but, but all of a sudden, look what happened. I got the kids, and it's not a fight. It's a blessing. And he's like, look what God did. And, I, and I, it's just like, isn't that what reactions are like? When we react, we destroy, we create storms, and then we look at people and go, why are they treating me this way? And the whole time it's... It's me, it's me. I, I'm the it's problem, it's me. God's like, I'm going to allow the storm so you get this right because you're a believer. You're not your own, and God has given us a way to live that isn't the way we want to do, but it's the way that's right for us. This guy that I went golfing with, this is another story. I've told this before, but I love this story. I went golfing with this guy, and, and, and uh, we're at Desert Canyon, and he's an 85-year-old guy, and his son was there. He's 60 years old, and his son is doing what all us golfers do, slicing and losing balls. And finally, his son goes off the chain and starts cussing and screaming and throwing clubs, and, 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 and Ron's like, I, sorry, I said his name, but this guy, he said, I'm going to go have a conversation with my son. And I'm like, get him. Let him have it. You know what I want to say to him? I want to grab him and say, you're 60 years old. Grow up. And so he goes over to his son and I'm like, he doesn't think I'm listening, but I'm like, I cannot wait for him to say, hey, I'm with a pastor and I need you to shut up. And by the way, why don't you just go home? But anyway, he, he goes over to his son and he says, buddy, I love you and I'm proud of you. And I don't care how you golf. I don't care if it goes well. I don't care. I don't care. I just want you to know I'm proud of you and you're going to do great things. But I want to say this to you right now, right now, the way you're, you're living could you just not cuss? Could you just not throw clubs for today? Could you just take this step? Man, this, this, his son just said, Dad, thank you. I won't do this anymore. I'm sorry. And I watched as this guy changed. And you know, the reactions wouldn't have changed him. But the response was from the love of God that was in his heart. That when the conflict came, Ron went right to God and God said, here's what I want you to say to your kid. That's what needs to inspire all of us today because when we don't respond, when we react. It's me. <laughs> you're going to hear this the problem is me. Jonah goes on and says this. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah, uh, uh, Lord, Jonah's God, O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sins, or for his sin. 
and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. I'm the problem. My storms put other people at risk. I think so many times that in my reactions, I could set up a friend to react back and it will destroy our relationship. My storms hurt everybody else. My reactions hurt everybody else. And how many people are screwed up today because somebody reacted at you or blew up at you or things happened this way and you have gained the same habit from the person that hurt you? And that's not how God asks us to live. And Jonah goes on and says this, Then the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him into the raging sea. And the storm stopped at once. And the sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power. And they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. I just just see that this, this problem is that Jonah needed the storm, but Jonah needed to respond to God's calling, but there's a whole place that if Jonah would have responded to God's calling, they will get their lives changed. There's a whole experience that if you follow God's calling, people are going to get your life, their life changed. If you would stop reacting but respond to what God's calling you to, I promise you your world will change. Yeah. <sighs> I'm the problem. I'm the problem when I'm not responding to God's call. And uh, you can go up. <laughs> and I was thinking of my wife uh, as, as they were coming home, and I had a whole bunch of zingers that I wanted to give her. I had uh, things written out. And I was going to say to her, you can't treat a man of God like this. I'm the pastor. I'm your. <laughs> you can't treat me. This is my house. I, I mean, think of all the things that I could write. You just called me a jerk. And, and I had all these things, and then God just starts doing the things that God does. <laughs> this is what he did to me. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. He says, stop thinking about her. Stop thinking about what she wrote. Start thinking about how much you love her, how excited you are that they're going to be home, and how you wish you didn't kill the fish. (laughs) So my response is I went and bought a fish. I didn't know they were 25 bucks, or I probably wouldn't have gone and bought one. (laughs) I would rather have eaten the salmon. (laughs) But but I bought her this fish that you can't eat, and uh, it was really nice, and, and I and I. I put it there for her, and then I had a uh, bunch of flowers, and I put the flowers in the vase. And then I wrote this note, and the note said, I love you, and I'm so glad you're home, and I don't want to do life without you. That's not what I wanted to write, but that's what God wants me to write. That's how God wants me to respond, but my reactions are not the same direction. My my reactions are, are the opposite place. Here's how my wife responded. She went from you're a jerk to tackling me at the church. She came in the first time I saw her in two weeks and she tackled me and we made out. No, I'm joking. It's <laughs> Actually, that's true. It's true. She's my wife. I could say that. I'm not one to kiss and tell, but... <laughs> and I just wonder what if What if I would have said, you're the worst wife ever. No wife responds to a husband like this. You're not even a believer. Believers don't. What if I would have done what I wanted to do? That's why I'm 
speaking on Taylor Swift's song because I believe so many of us are creating storms in our lives because we're not responding to the Word of God. And I want to take a moment. I put a bunch of verses in there, but I realize that I need to take these verses out because you already know what God's called us to. Can you just say out loud right now how God has called us to treat our enemies? Does anybody know how we should treat our enemies? Okay, you say love. Love is a bloodbath. We're supposed to love our enemies? Love is not about you. It's about somebody else. In fact, the greatest love is somebody that lays their life down for someone else. So how do we love our enemies? You put aside your feelings and you prop them up. Family value number one, put the goals and interests of others above your own. How do we treat people that are being difficult. Someone know a Bible verse. Does someone know something? How do we treat somebody that is cussing us out? Mercy? Bless those. That's a wild thought. Because here's someone laying you out and you're sitting there seeing them through the eyes of Jesus and you're seeing them and instead of responding with, I got a few for you, your response is, there's a great person inside, but this isn't the one. But I choose to not see this person, I choose to see this other person and I wanna speak that person into you. How do we treat our kids when they're trying to push us over the edge. (laughs) She says, I don't know. (laughs) That means you get to react because you don't know. I'm ignorant, God, I'm gonna react. (laughs) How do we treat our kids when they push us over the edge? Let them have it. Look at you, you cussing, you're golfing, grow up. Now, how do we respond to our kids? What does the Bible tell us to do? to love them. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not rude. It doesn't see the worst. It always sees the best. It's always encouraging. It has self-control. It's always lifting up, not tearing down. When I respond to God's calling, I become a hero. When you respond to God's calling, you become a hero. 